as an esteemed film pundit, my respect for Christopher Nolan's directing portfolio transcends the realm of mere admiration. See, with each film, Christopher Nolan unlocks the veiled corridors of the audience's consciousness from the sheer intensity of Inception to the haunting science fiction beauty of Interstellar. Nolan's films have ignited a passion for the art of cinema within viewers. But today, I am not here to talk about all of Christopher Nolan's movies. No, no, no. I'm going to be talking about an upcoming biopicture movie that Christopher Nolan also uh, has directed, Oppenheimer, which comes out in only two weeks on July 20th and July 21st worldwide. I am going to watch it on the IMAX screen, which should go without saying. So, you know, obviously, I am excited for Oppenheimer. But, as Uncle Ben from another universe has asserted, a universe that I just made up, with great excitement comes great expectations. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. My expectations for Oppenheimer are going to be discussed in length in this episode of the Cinema Courtroom. So let's not waste any more time and get right to it, starting with expectation one. I expect Oppenheimer to have an intricate narrative structure. Christopher Nolan is known for his non-linear storytelling and complex narrative structures. In an Oppenheimer biopic, he would have to employ a similar approach of intricate narrative structures in order to explore different aspects of physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer's life, including his work on the Manhattan Project, his personal relationships, which we see teased in the trailer footage, and the aftermath of the atomic bomb, which includes the I am become deaf, the destroyer of worlds monologue. So that's my first expectation for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer coming out in two weeks. Now the second thing to expect from Oppenheimer would be a rich character study about Oppenheimer. Now, Christopher Nolan, uh, throughout movies like Inception, delves into the psychology and motivations of his character. In this biopicture, I expect there to be a detailed exploration of Oppenheimer's inner conflict and struggles, as well as his conflicting emotions and the moral conundrums he faced while contributing to the development of the atomic bomb. I don't want them to like focus too much on the political views surrounding the atomic bomb, because I think a biopicture must remain as factual, um, you know, confirmed by two sources and all that shit. But yeah, I don't want politics, but rather Oppenheimer's moral consciousness before and after he made it, which is factual. Now, as for the next and third expectation for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, intellectual undertones. Here's what I enjoy the most about Christopher Nolan's films, ladies and gentlemen. Christopher Nolan's movies often tackle thought-provoking concepts and explore philosophical themes. In an Oppenheimer biopicture, Christopher Nolan would need to explore the ethical implications of scientific discovery, the essence of power, the consequences of Oppenheimer's actions, and the impact of the atomic bomb on humanity, as has been proven. Okay, now here's the fourth 
and final obvious expectation that I have for Oppenheimer. <laughs> Unless you're watching Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> Attention to historical accuracy. That's my final expectation for Oppenheimer. Because while Nolan also incorporates fictional elements into his narratives, another thing that he does is that he pays attention to the historical precision. In an Oppenheimer biopicture, we should expect concise research and an attempt to faithfully represent the events and personalities involved in the development of the atomic bomb in a way that is not biased or maybe, you know, not too biased because if you want to dramatize some elements, which you should as a filmmaker because you're making a movie that people are going to just consume to get their minds off shit, even though Christopher Nolan, like other filmmakers, have the right to inject their political biases. And I don't believe in censorship, so... Yeah, they should be allowed to express whatever the hell they want. But then again, the audience also has the right to criticize the filmmakers for doing so. But, you know, Christopher Nolan, he knows better than that. And I, I trust him. The fact is, Oppenheimer created an atomic bomb, which was utilized for a specific reason. Anything that transcends this fact is our opinions and moral outlook on whether or not it was justified, whose fault it was, Japanese or Americans, etc., etc. So, ladies and gentlemen, here are my four expectations for Oppenheimer. One, I expect there to be an organized narrative structure. Two, deep character study. Three, intellectual themes. A common theme for Christopher Nolan, indeed. And finally, the obvious one, historical accuracy. Don't pull a Quentin Tarantino, uh, Nolan, and have, um, you know, Japan launch an atomic bomb on the United States instead. I mean, that would be very unexpected, but don't, don't do that. Historical accuracy is key. I'm here to watch a real movie about Robert Oppenheimer. So please, historical accuracy. Please, 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 please. please. Okay. The question I have for the listeners tuning into the show now is, what are your expectations for Oppenheimer? Are they the same as mine? Are there even a few expectations that I missed? Because I, I have more, but you know, I want to keep this um, shortened than the <laughs> podcast segment I have in my head for Oppenheimer. Because I have many expectations that I, it'll be time-consuming to go through. Are you a fan of Christopher Nolan's directing portfolio? Inception, Interstellar, Tenet, The Dark Knight, Dunkirk, etc., etc. Whatever your valuable insights are, share them with me in the comment section below or reach out to us through our Twitter inbox at Cinema Courtroom.